Hey gang, John Backerly here with your Lake St. Clair Fishing Report brought to you by Sportsman's Direct. It is Thursday, August 17th, and uh, this weekend is the Woodward Dream Cruise. So uh, I'm going to try to get out there this weekend, although it's going to be a little bit crazy. Um, my buddy Phil has got a, uh, a uh, garage sale in St. Clair Shores that I'm going to be working at uh, Friday and Sunday. It's over on Ardmore Park um, Drive over in St. Clair Shores. So, and I'm not sure if the whole uh, city of St. Clair Shores is having a garage sale weekend or what, but uh, I know Phil's going to have an absolute ton of fishing tackle over there, and I'll probably post his address in the comments here because I forgot to make a note of what the address is um, as a talking point. But um, anyways, I know he's got a ton of fishing tackle, and uh, if it is going to be a St. Clair Shores wide um, garage sale, then I mean, those are always kind of a big deal because of a lot of fishing tackle. But anyways, um, so water temp at Belle Isle um, today was 73 degrees. So it is down a couple of ticks from what it was um, for our last report, which was about two weeks ago, um, which was at 75. Uh, weather for the rest of this weekend looks really good. Although I will say that it looks like it's going to be windy tomorrow when that cold front comes in out of the north. And then uh, the rest of the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and then actually for the next 10 days looks really good. So I think there's one hot day in there. Maybe Sunday is going to be like in the mid to upper 80s, but then it cools right back down and we get into our nice, really super nice weather for for mid to late August with, you know, highest right around 80 degrees or even in the upper 70s. And that's just amazing. So I'll take it. I hate super hot weather. Um, and uh, I'd like... It'd be nice to have these fish transition into a uh, more like a fall pattern sooner than later. But anyways, um, my buddy Mike Martin is back in town from Mike Martin Outdoors. And uh, he's guiding out on Lake St. Clair now. And he's also doing um, what's become kind of a favorite thing that he started doing um, where he has these learning trips where he takes you out on your, or actually you go out on your boat with him. And then he like answers all kinds of questions. And it's like, a, it's kind of like a charter, but you know, he's teaching you. So it's a, it, it is a learning trip. So anyways, um, check him out on, I know he's on Facebook and if you need other contact info, I can get that to you, but, um, Mike Martin outdoors. And that's kind of a really neat idea. Um, a shout out to Mandy who went out with captain, um, Jeremy Ullman, I think last week. And, uh, she sent me a picture of this monster 74 inch long by 34 girth sturgeon and uh, she caught it on her birthday so i mean how cool is that and then she got a, a really feisty 59 that almost jumped out of her arms on the boat which was really cool so lots of smiles there i love pictures like that um, got another picture from uh, jacob williams and that was just a couple of days ago of a, a monster white bass that he got um, up in the north channel and uh, i guess there was a bunch of white bass up on the surface you know how they blow up and he threw a whopper plopper in there and got this 20 and a half inch white bass which um, is really close to um, the state record as far as length goes. Um, but he didn't think it was anywhere near the weight needed, but that's still, that's a beast of a white bass over 20 inches. And I've had a lot of reports from guys up there in that North Channel area. Um, there's a lot of bait up there right now. Uh, those white bass are schooled up. They are big white bass. They are not like um, some of those, you know, pods of smaller fish that we'll get um, during the spring run. These are just great big monster white bass. I know there were guys arguing online whether or not it was a, a hybrid, a wiper um, or not. It didn't look like a wiper to me. It looked really like a true, like a white bass. But um, anyways, so there's that kind of action going on up there in the North Channel as well. Um, another buddy of mine with all these rains, and we are getting in, we're at that time of the year, guys. So if, if you're one of the guys that likes to go up and chase king salmon up on that west side of the state, um, now is the time, especially with all these fronts coming through. It's, it's already pushed a bunch of fish over there into the harbors and in the river mouths over there up on over on the west side of the state. Um, Dan Byer sent me a picture of, of a nice king that he got on one of our new baits we're making called the Kang Banger. Um, and um, for, it's for vertical jigging. That's become like a big thing, especially with guys with kayaks and stuff now, is vertical jigging um, those kings in, in the river mouths and... Uh, you know, the, the lakes and so forth where the fish move into on that west side. Um, and that's become like a big deal. Same thing with, uh, I know guys are going over there. They're jigging this time of the year for Lakers too, up in um, uh, like uh, Traverse City area. And out here on, uh, on, on Lake Huron as well, they go out and fish those reefs way out in the middle of nowhere. And um, we're doing a smaller version of that Kang Banger down in a one inch model. 
And uh, Mike Malone sent me some pictures too from up in Traverse. So um, I guess uh, apparently lake trout also like uh, like Wonder Bread as well. It must be all that uh, vitamin enrichment in there, right? I hate Wonder Bread, by the way. I love the color, but I hate Wonder Bread itself. But uh, anyways, um, got some uh, reports um, from Garrett Samsel. He's still banging the walleyes up there in the North Channel. Although those, those walleyes up there have gotten apparently really small. Um, lots of numbers and really small size. So you really got to you got to pick through them up there. Same thing up in that middle channel area. It's just like the, the size of the fish has gone way down. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, those fish taste fantastic, and there's a lot of them. Um, but, you know, not not the, the big fish that we had um, earlier in the year. I think the bigger fish right now are coming on the main lake, and we're still getting reports of guys that are trolling between, like, Harley and the 400 Club, you know, relatively speaking, between Harley and the 400 Club, 12 to 14 of water, 14 feet of water out in those weed beds out there, pulling in lines, and also pulling cranks when you can get get away with it too. Um, but um, definitely, a lot of these the bigger fish seem like they're more weed oriented right now, and there's still plenty of there's plenty of bait out here in the main lake. Um, I was down off the point at Metro. I was still been testing out these these new Kerwin electric bikes that we've got, and um, been just getting used to riding them around and everything and i was down there and the water quality i mean the clarity is like perfect there's just some nice color in the water and there was a ton of bait fish around there at the point at metro so it doesn't surprise me that all these big eyes are hanging around out there in in these weed beds because there's plenty of food the water temperature has really not gotten super warm and there's just a lot of fish activity and a lot of life in really close so it's real comfortable temp temperatures for these fish um Guys like uh, Joe Bauer are still out there chasing smallies. He's still into a lot of quality fish out there. I know Joe likes to hunt for those those quality fish. Um, Wayne Carpenter was out there throwing tubes up on the St. Clair River, catching smallies this week too. So there's just there's so many different places out there right now where you can get smallies. Um, Mike Martin also told me when he was out there hunting for perch, he was out by that bee buoy, and it was just loaded with smallies. It was loaded with perch too, mostly smaller fish up there by that bee buoy. But it was just it was just full of smallies. So lots of places you can catch smallies right now out there, guys. If you move around, you're gonna find fish. Um, just absolutely no doubt about it. Uh, the perch bite is still going, and like I said, Mike was all the way up at the bee buoy. He was catching perch. He fished all the way down the channel. Um, ended up down around the 20 can and caught fish all the way down there. And then we've had reports from guys like over in the dumping grounds. There's been guys over on the South Shore in Canadian water. Um, there's fish over by the Bell River Hump. I mean, there's just a ton of fish. And then we've still got guys fishing in some of the weed beds in tighter, still catching some fish too. Not the great numbers um, in those those shallower fish, but really good size. So it just, there's just, the fishing is still good. Now with this weather that we just had, that catfish bite went crazy on that last rain that we had at the mouth of the spillway. We had enough rain today. I'm sure it kicked that flow up again. There's, I'm sure that bite is going to be going. It's probably going right now, and it'll be going again tomorrow over there, especially if we get an offshore wind, which I do think when we get a northwest, it's going to pull that water out of that out of that spillway even more. When we get an offshore wind, you guys know it, right? It pulls that water out. Well, if you get a rain and an offshore wind, it pulls that water even out harder, right? Because it's like gonna drop the water level and so that water flows out harder, that pulls those fish in. So same thing happens over on the west side of the state for salmon. So um, it's just one of those things, it's part of the system and how it works. Um, but anyways, so with that rain and everything we've had and with the winds, there's gonna be some good mud lines out there. You look at that satellite image, I didn't get one today, but we did get one yesterday and that was good enough. Um, and it definitely shows that there is some color out there in the lake now. So you can fish those mud lines or those color transition lines out there, especially for walleye, for smallies, um, even, you know, everything's gonna associate around those color transition zones. And when you get those transition zones and they, they line up with either a temperature break or weed lines, then you got money. I mean, it's just like, double structure, structure from above, structure from below, and it helps concentrate the fish. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I've been blowing through this kind of fast. Um, man, I think I covered it all, pretty much what I wanted to talk about. Um, that's you know pretty much it, guys. We got great weather coming in ahead once we get through that, that wind shift tomorrow and that northwest wind, 
And uh, then, the, then the weekend looks great. We got emerald shiners back in the store again. Another nice load of emeralds. Big, fat, healthy emeralds for you guys that are out there chasing perch. And um, hopefully we'll see you at the store this weekend. Hey, if you like this video content and you want to get updated as soon as the next video is out there, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon and you'll get notified as soon as the next video is up.